Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest episode of the Tank Workshop Diaries here in the Tank Workshop, in the, um, the new workshop, that we keep calling it the new workshop. Um, we're doing a bit of a slightly different format. We're looking, uh, every other month, we're looking at just a bit of an overview of what's going on in the workshop, and I may be able to tie it in with why we're doing it, some of the events, some of the activities, or some of the priorities in our looking after our big running tank fleet. And then every second month, Jonathan and the workshop guys will look into more detail, more depth uh, of the actual individual projects. And I'll point the projects out that they will uh, spend more time on later on. But I'll just give a, a very simple overview. So if we, if we walk through the workshop and look at different projects, you can see the Valentine. Uh, a few years back, we just did the engine and gearbox, we call it systems overhaul. And we always said we need to get back to the suspension because the suspension was very worn out. So that's what we're doing now as planned. I'm quite, quite pleased that we actually stuck to our plans. And so the guys have been taking, as you can see, the vehicle is trussled up, is it a, even a, on the crane has a bit of a backup, and we've taken the front suspension units off it. They were completely worn out, and once again, it's amazing and worrying how things keep going with a lot of wear and tear. But we knew it was worn out, but we had decided it's time to uh, take it to bits. So they took it to bits. As you can see, these units on both sides, left and right, are completely removed. They're still in place in the back. So what the guys have done, I've got a lot of quotes for the, the bearings and everything, but again, Jonathan and the guys will talk about a lot more later on. But we're now waiting for parts to get it back in, uh, in one piece. But that's what we said, engine and gearbox a few years back, and now the suspension. So one step, not a complete restoration, just a systems overall, make it mechanically safe and sound. If we now wander over to our engine clean room, I'm not sure if you have seen this before. This was one of our requirements for the new workshop, is have a space where we can build engines and gearboxes and some more technical items without having to worry about all the dust flowing in from the workshop where every time you start up a vehicle you open the doors it's like a bit of a Sahara all the dust blowing in so we want to keep it a lot cleaner and tidier so what we have in here at the moment is we have the engine here that belongs to the light Vickers, Vickers Light Mark IV this was kindly restored to us a few years back and has run in our arena but we had a problem with the clutch which uh, sits in here, there's the pressure plate um, the flywheel but here's the actual gearbox and, and steering unit and this was the clutch which was worn, uh, which had burned out because the, the springs um, were a bit worn out. So we've relined the clutch uh, with asbestos free material. That's what we do every time we work on, on the vehicles here. If there is potential asbestos involved, we remove it and replace it. The spline as well was worn out and was uh, rebuilt, made a new one inside the workshop in the machine shop here in the workshop by our own staff. I'm very, very proud that we did that. So as you can see, it hopefully fits back on here again because there was a lot of let me get this right. There was a lot of play on it before. I'm stuck. But now, as you can see, much better. So this is just waiting assembly now. I think we have to machine this down a little bit to make sure it fits again on the, uh, on the engine. They will be reunited and then the whole thing will be fitted in the vehicle. We're looking at a bit. While we're in the engine clean room, you'll probably recognize it. This is a Rolls-Royce Meteor. So it's the tank version of the famous Merlin engine, even though it's quite different to the Merlin. It, it shares the, the basics. It's a 27 liter V12 engine. Fantastic motor for the, for the, um, the tanks like the, uh, the, the Comets, uh, the Cromwells, and of course the Centurion. This one isn't out of our particular Centurion, but we are going to bring our Centurion takeout in here because it's currently not running and we need to do some engine work on it. Next to it on the pallet, we have a, a cylinder head and bank. So this bit of the engine, uh, which we managed to acquire from some of our uh, friends at Duxford, from the, a company that, that restores and flies historic aircraft. These were fitted to a, a Merlin engine, but of course that is not for airworthy standards. So they kindly offered it to us, we managed to purchase it. So we have a spare uh, heads and banks for our um, Meteor. So once this is out, we are very keen, the guys are very keen to start working on a Rolls-Royce Meteor because it's one of those things we want to get a uh, grip on here at the Tank Museum because we run quite a few of them. So moving on, probably best this way. Uh, again, more bits and pieces. Here's a stillage full of uh, Scorpion, more of that later. There's the Vickers Light Mark IV. The engine and gearbox we just looked at in the clean room will be reunited in there. So once it's being reassembled, it will be lifted back in. Bit more work on the suspension and then it can go out again. Behind there, the 432, that's, that's P4, so it's a prototype 432. It's actually quite a significant vehicle for the tank museum. It was on loan to a railway museum in Scotland. It came back somewhat unexpectedly and we didn't have any space for it, so now at least it lives safely, safely in here. After the big vehicle move that we did last year for the World War II Gallery, we have a, quite a few vehicles left over in here at the moment, so almost every second vehicle is storage, but they need to be safely inside. So, um, yeah, let's uh, look at the next project. 
So again, the Chaffee, for example, that's a bit of a, uh, 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 it's a running vehicle, but we don't have any space for it at the moment, so it just lives in here safely inside. This vehicle, the Leopard 1, Canadian Leopard 1, 23C. We have two Canadian Leopards, 23A and 23C. We had a lot of work done on the, the, the turret, and we had some experts from Holland help us to change the hydraulic pump for the turret system. There's still some tweaking to do with it. It needs to be reset, probably. It's a bit like when you remove your radio from your car. It probably needs a code when you put it back in. They did a fantastic job, but um, yeah, it needs a bit of a reset. Control or delete, probably. More on that later in one of the more in-depth uh, tank workshop diaries. Uh, some suspension units just came back from the Valentine. Another vehicle that probably wasn't featured in any of the uh, previous tank workshop ep episodes is a Moak Piranha, uh, eight-wheeler. Normally it lives with a turret, uh, but we don't have the turret with it. This is sort of the mother vehicle of the Moak family. Um, we also have the Cougar, the ex-Canadian Cougar, which you may have seen here as part of the tanks in action display that we run. But this is part of that same family. So you have the eight-wheel version, the six-wheel version, all different types of uh, build-ups on top uh, with a turret, without a turret, recovery, you name it. Uh, again, one of those typical things within the military, you see one standard f uh, family of vehicles with different uses. Chieftain in Berlin Camo, this was on loan to the National Military Museum in the Netherlands, has returned from loan, so here it is, again, sort of storage till we find a home for it. Uh, Mark I Centurion came out of the World War II exhibition. It goes back in in a few months' time, so again, it temporarily lives here, a very significant vehicle, so we don't want it just to be uh, dotted around and moved back and forth, so that's why it temporarily lives in the workshop. Another vehicle we just finished, and again, I think it was featured in previous tank workshop diaries, is the uh, Elvis Scorpion. And we had a lot of work done on it, and then just when we thought it was right, the engine failed. The engine had been in it for years, uh, so Jacob, our apprentice, has done a fantastic job to rebuild a previous takeout we had. So we're always very keen that instead of just replacing, that we repair what we have when we can. And that's where you saw the, the stillage of bits and pieces early. They were left over. So basically what we did out of two engines, we built one. He did a fantastic job. I'm very proud that he did this and that we have done this. So hopefully a bit of testing and it should be fine again for the tanks in action season and for later in the year. Just a very quick, and all the vehicles you see in here, obviously part of our running fleet, apart from the vehicles we're storing, all these vehicles are listed, are scheduled in throughout the year to take part in tanks in action. Tank Fest or Tiger Day, so there is a bit of a, there is a plan to what, what we prioritize in the year, uh, the type of work needed that we make sure these vehicles can be ready for the upcoming events. Just behind us here, of course, we have the M60, uh, another vehicle that we run uh, for Tank Fest will go out. It also has a week of tanks in action. Every week we do of the nine tanks in action weeks is slightly different, uh, and this one will feature for one particular week as well. It's quite interesting though, the V-shaped hull, very typifying on the M60, again, uh, big vehicle. But yeah, it's just currently living here in the workshop. A vehicle that we will spend a lot of energy on in the next few weeks um, is the T72. We have two running T72s, a green one and a sandy one, as we call them. So this is obviously the sandy one. Um, we have a group coming from Slovakia with two uh, T72 trained technicians that will help us uh, with this vehicle. We've had a, a, quite a challenge getting the starting sequence right on this vehicle. It has an air start, an electric start, but there's quite a sequence of sensors that need to be uh, correct before it will operate the, the starting system. So they know everything about it. We probably have to take the engine out because there's quite an oil leak as well. So uh, yeah, exciting to um, work with people like we did on the Leopard. Where needed, we bring in the experts. We can't know it all and we, we're getting better at limiting ourselves to knowing what we're good at. For example, we've done the Matilda 2, we've done fantastic work on vehicles like the Scorpion or the Valentine, but at times we also need to know when we say put our hands up and say, hey, let's get some help in before we just having a go. And that's a good example on the T72 and on the Leopard. When it's sort of beyond our, our, our current ex experience, expertise, let's bring in the experts. So it's the T72 hopefully being worked on in the next few weeks and we'll hopefully report at the next uh, tank workshop there is a bit more in depth as well how are we doing with that I'm not sure if this has featured in a previous tank workshop diaries but this is our small machine shop here in the um, at the tank museum we've had a lot of fantastic work uh, we've got Bob Kendall he uh, has featured before he's building a jig at the moment um, in the background there that's a jig for the suspension that's one of the suspension units from the Valentine that we looked at previously, so he's making a whole clamping arrangement to, to safely disassemble it. There'll be a lot of tension on these things to make sure we don't have a suspension unit blasting through the workshop. So again, fantastic, uh, but Jonathan will talk more about it later in one of his specific Valentine tank workshop diaries. We've got a, so we've got a 
a mill, we've got a, a lathe. And another thing, Jacob, who I mentioned, has been doing our uh, J60 engine for the Scorpion, has done a fantastic job on that. He is now also machining some bits and pieces for the Valentine suspension. For example, these are all for the top rollers. Again, these are fantastic what he has done, uh, some machining work. I hope I don't mix them up here. But just to give you an idea how worn out some of the parts were, this is the top roller from um, uh, Bushes for the uh, Valentine. So yeah, it was time for a, a renewal there, and he's done all this on this, on this uh, lathe. Another thing, I think Mike Hayton mentioned it before in one of his um, uh, updates in the Tank Workshop Diaries about the talking about building a spare Maybach engine. Um, as part of that process, we're also working with University College uh, uh, London uh, and they want to measure the air movement and the, uh, the, on the breather pipe of our Maybach engine on Tiger 131 to see how much air moves actually during operation and when it sits still, because of course with changing temperatures you have engines that breathe in and out. So this is one of the plugs that fits on one of our spare Maybachs actually and the guys are just machining one so we can put a sensor in it. We didn't want to modify the original so the guys have made this one and uh, they will be fitting a sensor to it so we can attach this to Tiger 131 to see what sort of air movement there is and moisture movement through the breather of one, uh, the breather pipe of the Maybach on Tiger 131. So that's the, uh, a lot of good work goes on that really supports what's happening there. Without this, we would have to farm it all out and that uh, wouldn't be very cost effective. So again, a lot of experience here and a lot of great support for the projects going on there. So I hope that gives you a bit of an overview of what we do uh, sort of um, on a daily basis here at the Tank Museum. A lot of the vehicles planned in for, um, for the Tanks in Action, for Tank Fest and different types of work from a serious sort of suspension overhaul to more basic maintenance, but it's all important to keep these. We've got about 55 running vehicles, keep those going throughout the season and get a better idea of how they work. And we work where needed with sort of expertise from outside of the organization to get uh, the best of our team and make sure we can keep looking after these vehicles. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to subscribe to our Patreon scheme, please do. It really helps us do the work we do. So thank you again and I uh, hope you like it. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please subscribe to the Tank Museum's YouTube channel, and if you can, support them on Patreon. Can you um, and standard pedal setup, uh, like a car. You got your gas, you got your foot brake, and you got a clutch. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> it's going to take a while. Yeah, it's going to take a while. It really is.